start again. Um, so are there any questions, first of all? I had no idea with the last class. Um, I'm happy, actually, since we don't, since we have an unusual grading system, um, I'm uh, happy to give one or two lectures during the exam week, but you guys might be too busy with your normal exams to want to come to class. All right, look, think about it. I can do one. Huh? I can do one class. You could do one class? You talk, I'll come. I can do, yeah, I can do one as well. I can't make All right, yeah, let's do one <laughs> instead of two, um, because it would only be one exam. So, um, I will send you email. And in fact, uh, the most sensible thing is to have it either Monday at 5.30 or Wednesday at 5.30. And does that, either of you have a conflict with one of those? Oh, I can't make Wednesday. Okay. All right. Now, we were talking about electron-positron scattering. And um, we just started, so I'll start this again. And one thing that I was struck by, by the way, uh, which I just mentioned parenthetically last time, is that I found it much easier when I, because I'm latexing the notes. Um, I found it much easier to do the derivation because I was latexing it than in the old days when I used pencil and paper. And it's, it's just that um, LaTeX just organizes everything so much that your brain doesn't have, my brain didn't have to do so much work trying to figure out what the hell those squiggles that I had just written on the page meant. Um, yeah. So you might, you, the other thing is that you, with LaTeX, you sort of mouse things all, are, around. And uh, I mean, you, you, you copy and paste effectively. and. That procedure sounds completely secretarial, but it's also it also has a logical structure to it. In other words, you keep a certain string of symbols, and then you change it for a certain reason in a certain way. That is more logical than writing the whole damn thing again. So I'm just it's just a possible suggestion. I could even be wrong, but that's. <coughs> That's my impression. Okay, now, as you know, what you can do is you can draw these sine diagrams. So one diagram, in fact, that's what I'm going to do first, is the electron coming in and the positron coming in. And with positrons, you draw the arrows backwards. Feynman used to say the positron's going backwards in time. You don't need to believe him. But... Um, and there's the photon going across. But there's another diagram, of course, namely and um, I threw the photon horizontally on purpose because I, the vertex, where in, this is, say, the x vertex and this is the y vertex. And uh, we're integrating d fourth x d fourth y, so either could be earlier and the other later. X could occur first or second in time. And um, so I guess if x is first, then the photons emitted and absorbed at y. If instead you think of y as first, then the photons emitted at y and absorbed at x. In any case. The amplitude, which is p prime, s prime, q prime, t prime, this u is the, um, let me just mention what u is, u is equal to e to the minus i v of t dt from minus infinity to plus infinity. And that turns out to be e to the e integral psi bar a slash psi 
d4x. So that's our u. And then we have psqt here. And um, so clearly this is e squared integral psi bar a slash psi at x psi bar a slash psi y d fourth x d fourth y. But now if we're doing this process and we say this happens at x rather than at y, and so we cancel the factor of 2 here. Um, if we're having then the the photon, the the, uh, the electron, actually in my notes I did it this way, so let me just do it this way. So I'm making this the positive frequency, the annihilating part, because it annihilates the electron at x. The electrons annihilated at x and then created at y. So there's the creation part of that. And now the positron is annihilated at y. But the field that does that is this one. Um, so you remember the, um, just schematically, the electron field is E to the I P X U B, the annihilation operator, plus E to the minus I P X V C dagger. And then on the other hand, psi bar is E to the minus I P X U bar V dagger plus E to the I P X V bar C. And of course they're integrated, DQP and so forth. DQP over 2 pi to the 3 halves. Ditto. So, so what annihilates the uh, positron? It's this operator, C. And C then is in the annihilating part of psi bar. That's why it's psi bar plus at y that annihilates the positron at y here. And on the other hand, the positron's created at y. The one that creates the positron is the creation part of psi, not psi bar. And so we have psi minus y there. Okay, well, these things just spit out basically the u or a u or a v or a u bar or a v bar divided by 2 pi cubed, a phase factor. And so what we get then is e squared over 2 pi cubed. We're getting rid of the electron there. And, oh, and this is a time-ordered product. I forgot the time-ordered product. Because, I'm sorry, I wrote this wrong. This is a time-ordered product. Okay, and this is the charge of a positron, this E. This one is 2.718281828, so forth. So this is time-ordered product, psi bar plus of y, a slash of y, some minus of y. And now, I've had the things at x already act, and so this is u bar of p prime, s prime, a slash of x, u of p and s, e to the i, p minus p prime, x, d fourth x, d fourth y, q, t. Let me see if I can. I want to throw that um, 
a race of four, we're just sort of firing in that corner. He's got, I'm going to aim for the smiley face. Huh? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. The next thing is we act with these two to get rid of the positron fields. And then what we have, ah, but notice what's going on. This is creating the positron. It has to cross the operator that annihilates the positron. It's a fermion that gives you a minus sign. So this is minus e squared over 2 pi to the 6 integral vacuum time ordered product and uh, what's left v bar qt a slash of y v of q prime t prime e to the i q minus q prime y and then the all just all the rest of this namely u bar of p prime s prime a slash of x u of p and s e to the i p minus p prime x p fourth x p fourth y and now we just have vacuum left. All right, are, are there any questions? Um, I have my bag of chocolate. Oh, yes. Person moving the. Can you just give me one for the, the one thing and then. The, okay. okay. Uh, I have a question though. Yeah. Um, so, how were you able to turn those interior psi operators on the top line to psi minus and psi bar minus? How was I able to? So you say, say you say that um, psi plus you end up with psi plus because the other part. This is annihilating the po initial positron. Right. And in order to do that, it has to cross this one. That gives you a minus sign. The annihilation operator crosses. <coughs> you leave the spinner. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Let, let, let me just emphasize that once more. We leave the spinners in place because in this structure here, what you've got, for example, here is you've got u bar. That's a four vector, four vector in the Dirac sense, not the Lorentz sense. And then you've got a slash. That means there are gamma matrices. So the index of the psi bar does matrix multiplication with the indices of the gamma matrix and then with the index of the spinner here. So you move the operators out and let them interact with, oh, I left out here, PSQT. That's the initial state. My arm must have been down. Um, so, what happens is you move the operators around, have them turn the initial state and the final state into the vacuum, and but you leave the spinners in place because they have to be sitting on the right sides, just where they were relative to the gamma matrices. And then this thing, this whole structure here, psi bar a slash psi, that is effectively a scalar that doesn't have any indices at all. So all the indices have been contracted there. The indices here get contracted. And so now what you have is U, V bar um, summed over the, in other words, if we wrote this thing in detail, it would be V bar I say QT gamma A I J A A of Y V J U prime T prime. So that's what this thing is. Is there a question? I still don't understand follow step from um could you maybe like one of like what have you done with the like psi plus? What did I do with size plus x? To get into that like next step. Uh, you okay, well the psi plus x, I left the u where it was. So the psi plus x. I, the phase factor's x. there. The b, yeah. the, the b just acted on this state. So in other words, what we had then was b of p 
and S, and actually, we're, it, it's really a double prime because we're integrating over P. This is a dQp, and of course, a sum over S, the spin. And then this thing is B dagger of P and S, and then C dagger of Q and T, and then vacuum. And so this, if when P prime, when P double prime is P and S double prime is S, this thing turns into a, this is effectively delta of P double prime minus P, delta S double prime S, C dagger Q T. Right, where's the B dagger come from? That was the initial state. Oh, I see, yeah, yeah, of so. Any other questions? Let me just mention to, 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 to you that this stuff is really straightforward. Um, in other words, when I wrote up these notes, I didn't have to think a great deal. Um, I just had to essentially follow along and just one step follows after the other. So um, you know, there's nothing deep here. So I want you to ask as, as many questions as necessary to get it completely straight. And in fact, what you can do at home is you can just go from one step to the other if I skip too much in the notes. And um, uh, it all follows from these expansions and the corresponding formula for A, which I added. I mean, I constantly update the notes. In fact, I updated them just. 15 minutes ago. Okay. So now what we've got left is nothing but numbers apart from these two operators. And um, in other words, a sub a of y and a sub b of x, a time ordered product inside the vacuum, that's just the photon propagator. And um, so in other words, uh, a somewhat better way of writing this is minus e squared over 2 pi to the 6 integral d bar q t gamma b v of Q prime, T prime. Now the weird thing about these, uh, uh, the antiparticles or the positrons, is that the thing that you'd think would be the final state spinner, the one that has the bar, in the case of positrons, it's the initial state. And that's because it's, so the, it's the annihilating part of psi bar that, annihil that has the positron annihilation operator. Okay, e to the i q minus q prime y. That's this factor. And then u bar u bar of p prime s prime gamma a u of p and s e to the i p minus p prime x. And now what's left is vacuum time order product A sub A of X. I interchanged these, didn't I? All right, that was probably a typo. Uh, it doesn't matter, but um, let me do it. Let me not introduce any extra confusion here. So it was A sub A of Y and then the x. Okay. On the other hand, that's an even function of x minus y. 
And so this thing is, um, and let me get the sign right, it's minus i. So this thing is the photon propagator. That's this thing. And remember, we have sort of a we have a schizophrenic approach to the electromagnetic field. The incoming and outgoing particles we are going to represent. You haven't seen them yet, but the, the because I haven't done incoming or outgoing photons yet. I don't think. No, I haven't. Uh, the incoming and outgoing photons we're going to be treating as with A written as in the Coulomb gauge. On the other hand, this thing here, as we learned when we were discussing QED and the path integral formulation, can be written in this nice covariant form. And this covariant form takes account of the Coulomb term that we that we don't have. You don't see any Coulomb term here. That Coulomb term has gone into this. Yes? Why, why is it that you can pull out those like, um, the Those what? The big, the, the big A's. Say it again? The why, why can you pull them out from that position? Oh, because everything else here these are just numbers. There are no more operators. Which? Well, this is a four vector gamma B, I guess, but. Actually, look, look, let me get this thing straight. This is an A. Because the A came first, and this is a B. X came second. Now, what were you saying? Are these spinners not four vectors? Well, the spinners are Dirac four vectors, but um, but uh, this the only operator left at this stage is this. So this is the only thing whose order makes any difference. Is it an operator in another Hilbert space than the four vector space? A right. is just a number. Yeah, the the four ve four vector is just four, four numbers. But A A is isn't like a matrix, right? Mm -hmm. I think the, the, the chortle thing is getting complicated. Oh, all right. So did you, did you ask a question? And not get one? You asked a question, and didn't get one. So the gamma is a sorry. It's a number or operator. Say it again. It's gamma, gamma A. Yes. This gamma A is is with this A A of Y, and then, in other words, that's what this structure is. So in other words, we we start out. We have a state in the Hilbert space. We have operators, operators, state. But then we take the annihilation and creation operators here. We move the annihilation operator to the right, and it knocks out the incoming electron and leaves us with the incoming positron. And then this one goes over, and it passes two fermion operators, but that just gives us a plus sign or two minus signs. And this creation operator knocks out the incoming electron, and we just have the incoming positron. And now the operators that are left are just these three and the photon. And then we have this state. Everything else is a number. And then uh, this one acts 
knocks out the incoming positron. This one creates the outgoing positron. You get a minus sign when they cross. That's this minus sign. And then everything is a number except for the vacuum state here, the vacuum state here, and then these two operators, the photon operators. And the mean value in the vacuum of the time order product of these electromagnetic fields is what we call the photon product data. And it has this nice form. And because it's, and that's what's represented by this line here. This is the photon line. This is the photon propagator. This squiggly line means this four-dimensional integral. And the eta AB couples with the gamma A and the gamma B. So did, did I answer all the questions or are there more questions? It's important to get this straight. And as I said, it's not deep. So there's no... Okay. I just have one quick one. Yeah. Um, is this theory also gauge invariant? Is this U1 gauge invariant? Is the theory gauge invariant. Yes, the theory is gauge invariant. But of course, what that means, I would have to think. Um, all right, the nice, the nice way to think about the gauge invariants is in terms of path integrals. Remember I said you could express the Green's functions as ratios of path integrals. And in those two, in the numerator and the denominator, you integrate over all gauge fields. So all gauge copies. And it's also in the denominator. So you have a you have a, an extraordinarily an extraordinary amount of duplication in the numerator and the denominator. And so when people actually do perturbation theory, which is what we're doing here, you don't want to have to integrate over all gauge transformations. Because remember, gauge transformations are local. So for every function of space-time, you have a gauge transformation. So you don't want to integrate over all of them if you're doing perturbation theory. So what we do is we pick a gauge. That gauge that we picked is, was the Coulomb gauge. And then in this Coulomb gauge, um, we quantize the electromagnetic field, but we made use of this trick that we learned doing path integrals that we get away with using this very nice relativistic propagator. The gauge field in this case is the photon field. Excuse me? The gauge field in this case is the A, the photon field. Right, but the gauge transformation acts on the Fermi field as well as the gauge right. field. And this particular thing isn't gauge invariant. Because this is just a piece of the action. It's the action mm -hmm. that's gauge invariant. This would change uh, by yeah. the derivative of the gauge field, and then the gauge transformation on the Fermi fields would cancel because it's just a base factor. Oh, wait. Does that mean that the probability is not gauge invariant? Because this is a probability amplitude that you're trying to calculate. So right. Does that mean that if that term is in gauge invariant, that the well, 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 yeah, but what we did let, let's get remember about gauge invariance. In the path integral formulation, you can preserve gauge invariance, and you integrate over all gauge fields, the numerator and the denominator. In other words, you're you're talking about something equals integral fields e to the i s d. A, D, Psi, and so forth. And then down here, E to the I, S, D, A, D, Psi, and then these, well, I'll just write fields. Fields. And these are the class, these are the fields represented as functions, these are the fields as operators. Mm. Okay. That makes sense. So this picture, you, you have something that's manifestly gauge invariant on the left and the right. But when you do perturbation theory, we break gauge invariance, we quantize in the gauge, and in the case of electrodynamics, most convenient gauge is the Coulomb gauge. In uh, the case of non-abusing gauge theory, one often quantizes in a different gauge. What's called, uh, if you just set one of the components equal to zero, temporal gauge or axial gauge. Although Schwinger 
who was had, had just incredible dexterity. He was he would um, play the equations the way some fantastic pianist plays a piano, and um, he was a fantastic picture of um, something. I won't digress here because we, I mean, we need to get on, along a little bit further. So um, here what we do then is we stick this in here. Well, once we've done that, there are no more operators at all. We just have a big integral. In fact, in this integral, I've left out something. This d fourth x, d fourth y. And then if I put this thing in, let me put it in. Then we have d fourth k. And now we have 2 pi to the fourth. So now we have 2 pi to the tenth, really. And instead, in here, what we actually have I could just bring it, but let me just make sure I what we have is uh, A to A B. There's the minus i. Minus i just turns this into a plus and puts an i here. A to AB over k squared minus i epsilon e to the i k. Oops. I think it's literally y minus x rather than x minus y, but it's not going to make any difference. And then d fourth x, d fourth y, d fourth k. And if we want, we can just say this is 2 pi to the 10th. So d4 of x, d4 of y, d4 of k. Now at this point, you integrate over at x and y. And when you do that, you just get two delta functions. And you use up 2 pi to the 8th. And so what you get then is i e squared over 2 pi squared integral v bar qt. <clears throat> now we have this, I'm going to leave the gamma a up, then we have uh, the eta. Gamma B here, A to A B, just gives us a gamma lower A. So I'm going to make this gamma upper A, V of U prime, T prime, U bar, P bar, P, P bar, no, P prime, S prime, gamma lower A, U of P and S. In the notes, it's backwards, but it doesn't matter. Um, 1 over k squared minus i epsilon. Now you remember I said the minus i epsilon doesn't matter for the ingoing and outgoing. Uh, well, for certain cases it doesn't matter. Here, it's, here it matters in the beginning, but it's not going to matter in the end, as, uh, it turns out. Um, So what we have is e to the i k y minus x and well shall we? if I think I ought to do the delta functions. Okay, let's do the delta. Let's imagine we're doing so what has this given us? This has given us delta of R. If we do the y integration, we have q uh, q minus q prime plus k. q minus q prime plus k. Then we do the x integration, and we have p minus p prime minus k. Okay. Um, all right, I think that is pretty much 
than. And um, now when we do this integration, um, this says that k is p minus p prime. And so I'll go over to this force.
Okay. Sine bar minus at y, a slash at y, sine minus at y. But now we replace them with the spinners, v bar of q and t, a slash of x, v of p and s, e to the i, p plus p prime x. Notice there's a plus here. That's because it's the annihilating part. D4 of x, D4 of y, and then vacuum state. Shouldn't it be P plus Q? Yes. In fact, that's what the notes say. God, you're entitled to two more. <laughs> okay, so now we act on the final state, and we just get E squared over 2 pi to the 6. And now we just have a vacuum. And now we replace these by the spinners. And uh, so that's U bar, P prime, S prime, A slash of Y, U of, no, not U, V of Q prime, T prime. So these are the outgoing spinners. This is the electron, this for the positron, and I've been seeing things like this for 50 years, but I still haven't gotten used to it, that the, posi that the positron spinners are backwards. In other words, V rather than V bar. You know, it's an outgoing spinner, but that's just the way it is. Just as this, this is the incoming positron comes in with a V bar. All right. trying to find where, yeah, here we go, V bar of Q and T, gamma, no, I skipped a line. This is just an A slash. Factor here, so I'll do it here. It's e to the minus i p prime plus q prime y. So these are the two particles being created, and we have d fourth x d fourth y vacuum. Okay. Now we rewrite things. This is just a gamma times a field, and so forth. And so this is. Um, e squared over 2 pi to the 6 integral of actually these things, these, these spinners are just numbers so you can pull them out all together so the way I wrote it this time was u bar p prime s prime gamma a V of Q prime, T prime, V bar of Q and T, gamma B, U of P and S, and then an integral vacuum time ordered product, A sub A of Y, A sub B of X, vacuum, and d fourth x, d fourth y, and then the phase factor that I just don't have any room for. <coughs> Here, let me just sort of write the integral here. And then you have e, and I'll put them all together. i, p plus q, x minus i, p prime plus q prime y. Okay, so that's the whole expression. But now we just replace this by this. This is the photon propagator. 
and this is representing this line here. Or to put it differently, this curly line represents that photon propagator. And by the way, in, this, in the jargon, this is called a virtual photon. And what this virtual photon is, mathematically, is just this integral. All right, so what <laughs> shall we do? Shall I go to the backboard, do you think? Or? Well, there's still going to need all that stuff. Huh? If we're still going to need all that stuff, might as well. All right. All right, so let me go. Gamma A V prime 
V bar M A U over P plus Q squared. I can forget the minus I epsilon and then delta function conserving <coughs> momentum for momentum and that's basically it. Now, I've been deriving everything from first principles in all of these cases and I'm going to continue um, for the case of um, Compton scattering. But what you do now is you just add the two amplitudes. So amplitude one is up here, amplitude two is there, and when you add the two amplitudes, the first one came in with a positive sign, and the order of the spinners, though, is different. So let me just, instead of just rewriting everything, let's just say we add, well, maybe I'll write it down. This is the way it is. So the total amplitude is I P squared delta of P plus Q minus P prime minus Q prime over Q pi squared <coughs> big bracket, and now I'll, I'll use this notation, V bar gamma A V prime, this is amplitude one, U bar prime gamma upper A U, and this is over P minus P prime squared, and now the one we just calculated, which is U bar prime gamma A V prime, V bar, gamma A, U, and now it's over P plus Q squared. Okay. So that's the final answer. But the total answer, A1 plus A2, is this. Now, as you see, this is not a cross section. This is simply an amplitude. And we'll, we'll, are you able to get this in the... Okay. So, the procedure to go from the amplitude to the cross-section is pretty much the same as the, one, as the one you learned in quantum mechanics, but I'll do it in class. Probably I should do it in class, the, the final lecture, I'll do it in class. Let's see. Um, should we do a brief story time? Let me let me just tell you something that I heard uh, that Erskine Bowles said uh, recently. He, Erskine Bowles had been president, was recently president of the University of North Carolina, and he said that frequently people would ask him, "What's it like to be?" president of a university, like the University of North Carolina. He said, it's like being the CEO of a cemetery. You have lots of people under you, but nobody's listening. <laughs> and um, now that I think about it, it's really true, because most of the time, I don't even know who the president is of UNM, let alone Listen uh, to the president. And I think that's the way most faculty, are. and I suppose the students aren't listening to the president either. So it's, it's an awfully funny expression. Um, let's see, maybe one more story um, about Jefferson. Uh, I didn't tell you the Louisiana Purchase story, did I? I think so. Okay. Um, well, Jefferson. Heard Jefferson wanted to buy New Orleans from France. He knew that Napoleon wanted money because Napoleon was waging wars, and the countries waging wars have to pay their armies, and so they run out of money. And um, so Napoleon, so Jefferson sent Monroe over there to Paris, and when he got there, he met the American ambassador to France, and then the two of them were met by Talleyrand, who or Talleyrand who was 
Napoleon's foreign minister. And Talleyrand said, have I got a deal for you? I'll sell, I'll sell you the whole Louisiana territory for $15 million. And so the Monroe and the American ambassador weren't authorized by Jefferson to do that, but they said, well, it's okay with us. We'll just have to get the okay from Washington. And um, by the way, the reason why Napoleon was willing to do this is of course he wanted the money, but secondly, he realized, he realized two things. One was that the, the Louisiana Territory was meaningless to him because he couldn't control it. It was 4,000 miles away. And secondly, he also realized that by doubling the size of the United States, uh, the United States would, in 100 years, become a power that could challenge England or France. But Napoleon said, that's somebody else's problem. <laughs> and um, so Monroe went back to Washington, and Jefferson said, gee, I, this is a marvelous deal, but the, con the Constitution doesn't give me the power to do this. But the Congress wanted to do it, and Jefferson, being, so to speak, an organization man, was flexible enough to say, well, I have my principles, but this is the good of the country, so we'll do it. We'll buy the Louisiana Territory from France. And so that's what happened. All right, that's enough story time then. Any questions? Good, because I don't know. What I've told you is everything I know about this. There's no layer below what I just said. All right, so let's um, let's try to do Compton scattering. Um, and you tell me how much time should I leave for you to do these stupid idea forms? These idea forms, I, I call them stupid because because they're really designed for a class in English or a class in sociology or a class in psychology. They're not designed for a physics class. So, you know, just do your best to fill them out. How many minutes do you want? Ten minutes Five? Five? Five. Five. All right. So I'll try to do Compton scattering in nine minutes. All right. There's one thing that you want to remember is that the time order's product of say a fermion field index L, a, an adjoint of a fermion field index N at Y. What is this? Well, first of all, it's not what one would think. Name, it, it, the first part is what one would think. So it's just the theta, which is 1 if x0 is later than y0. But then there's an all-important minus sign. And the minus sign comes in because you've got the Fermi operators in the opposite order. So that's, that's why that happens. And this thing, in fact, is equal to, there are various ways of writing it. One is minus gamma A dA plus M gamma zero, all that LN on delta F of X minus Y, which is to say, all of this ln on integral e fourth q over 2 pi to the fourth. This is called the electron propagator, e to the i q x minus y over q squared plus m squared minus i epsilon. Now, in this particular case, um, because of these derivatives, whether it's x minus y or y minus x is important. So you have to keep the order straight. In the photon propagator, you can just be casual about it. 
doesn't matter, it's an even function. If you bring in these derivatives, they bring down IQs, and what you get is integral d fourth q, 2 pi to the fourth, minus i, gamma a q a, plus m, gamma zero, ln over q squared plus m squared minus i x1 e to the i q x minus y. And notice you have where in the photon case you have 0, you just have k squared or q squared. Here it's q squared plus m squared. Now these things are, we're going to, I like to keep the thing in for the form of psi bar. So I'm going to multiply from the right by, or I'm going to multiply psi n dagger by i gamma zero. And then what we have, and I'll write this as a vertical equation, zero time ordered product psi L of x psi bar one of n of y equals integral, one way of writing it is just a minus sign in front, d fourth q, 2 pi to the fourth, q slash plus im, q squared plus m squared minus i epsilon, e to the i q x minus y. So the i gamma zero, the gamma zero squared is minus one. You then have i times minus one, but minus i squared is minus, and then you have minus i on m. So altogether, it's an overall minus i. So this this is the this is the convenient way to do it. For as I said, it's much better to stay with the bar notation. The daggers just are hopeless because you've all got these extra gamma zeros all over the place. And um, it's uh, really annoying. So we'll keep this in mind. I'll go up to the front. I'll draw the Feynman diagram and then um, start computing them. Scattering is the initial state is a photon and an electron, the final state is a photon and an electron. So what you've got is basically electron, 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 and a photon, and a photon. Now this can be the photon in and that the photon out, but there's going to be another process. Oh, I, I drew it wrong. It's, it, I mean, it's not wrong, but I, I don't like to draw it that way. Electron in, electron out. You can have the photon in here and the photon out there. Electron in and out. Now, the photon can be out here and in there. And this line, is, the horizontal nature of this line is to indicate that whether x occurs before or after y, it both happen, we add all the amplitudes, because after all, we're integrating over d fourth x, d fourth y. So, for some reason, I like to use k for photons. So I'm just changing Q to K. And now it's going to look like this again. But what is the process? Well, I'm going to do this diagram first. This is 1 and this is 2. So everything gets annihilated at X. So there's the, this one, the, we use the annihilating part of the electron field at x, 
and then the, it gets created at y, so we use the creating part of the electron field at y. On the other hand, the photon is annihilated at x, so at x we're going to use the annihilating part of the photon field there, and at y we're going to use the creating part of the photon field. And, since, and now these are the incoming and outgoing photons, so we use the formula for, for photons that I'll um, rid of some of this stuff. So A of X, A say B of X, is an integral. And let me just shoot back here in the notes. I added this equation after I got an email from one of you asking what A was. And so now in the present version, it's uh, equation 13. And so this is a sum, lambda equals minus plus, although here it's going to be t. So maybe, well, t, the trouble with t is it looks like time, doesn't it? So this is going to be epsilon of k and lambda, a of k and lambda, I k x plus epsilon star of k and lambda a dagger of k and lambda e to the minus i k x and all of this gets multiplied by and I'll, I'll, I'll put this factor I'll write it like this d q k but now the denominator it's the 2 pi to the 3 halves like for an electron, but then it's square root of 2k0. So there's an extra term there. This thing, for incoming and outgoing particles, this is actually a vector. And so, so that's, that's basically what we've got. This is a three vector whose divergence is zero. It's the Coulomb gauge photon field. All right, so we're at the end of the hour. I will. All right, so what I'm going to do then in the last lecture is is I will do the rest of Compton scattering, then I'll summarize what I've been, uh, I've, what we've sort of learned implicitly as the Feynman rules, and then I'll draw these diagrams in momentum space, which is what the Feynman rules apply to, and, um, well, I don't know, it's something else. All right, so these, these things, just, do, do, it, have you been, anyone in long enough to know what to do with these things? Oh, um, I've heard that we just give them to Elisa. Huh? I've heard that we just give them to Elisa. You'll just give them to Lisa? To Ali Elisa Gibson. The Lisa. Elisa. Elisa. She works in... Is she Gibson? I think you know who she is. Oh, okay. You can yeah. give her to Elisa Gibson. Sure. She'll know what to do. Yeah, that's what I heard. All right. Also, yeah. would, would you do me a favor? Send an email 